All right, everyone, welcome. We'll uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, so my name is Peter Stowell. I am the product manager of Fast Scout here at Fast Model Sports. So just a little bit of my background. I uh, grew up in the Chicago area, uh, went to uh, BYU for college, worked uh, in the analytics department for, for the teams there, and then even did some research for Utah Jazz. I was studying statistics at the time. Uh, my professor was involved with the, with the Jazz, and so did, did some research on injury data for them. Then I uh, came to Fast Model after school and been here at Fast Model for about three years now. So excited to walk you guys through Fast Scout. This has been uh, my, my main job is, is creating this uh, for, for all of our markets. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So you guys should be able to see my screen now. Um, I'm logged in as the Bulls. Bulls are the home, hometown team. So that's the reason I, I chose them here. But obviously uh, you can log in as any of your teams. And when you log in, you'll see your name up here in the top right. Uh, your, your team and your logo and all that. And then this first page you see is what we call the dashboard, which is just a, a place to uh, stay updated on your stats throughout the season. So everything you see here will of course exist within what we call Scout Builder, which is a real scouting report creator. And you can do a lot more customization, of course, in Scout Builder. But this is just a page, you know, to stay updated throughout the year, it has some pretty interesting data. So I'm not gonna dive too deep on any of the analytics and stats in here, but I just wanna say right off the bat, you can always click on your name on the top right and I wrote up a stats glossary. So if you guys have any questions on any of these stats, why they're useful, even some of the math behind it, you can always click on the stats glossary there. And we also have our help button here, which goes uh, kind of deep into all parts of FASCO where you can uh, just look up all, all of our user guides, even watch some videos on all this as well. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, so at the top left, you'll see we have fast scout factors. So that's kind of our version of the four factors. Obviously everyone's pretty familiar with the four factors now and we have all these more advanced stats here on the left. You can always hover over any stat and we'll write out a little tooltip as we call it um, that shows you uh, the full name of it. And then we split it up, you know, offensively, defensively and then versus the NBA average. Uh, another thing we do, uh, especially important of course, the NBA is ranking. So we rank you out of 30 of every stat we even do a color shortcut where if you're in the top 10 of any given stat, it'll show in green. So the Bulls, you know, had a really high defensive turnover percentage. They forced a lot of turnovers. So they're first in the league there in green. If you're in the middle 10 of the league, so 11 through 20, you'll show up in gray. And if you're in the bottom 10, you'll show up in red. So a good way to just kind of contextualize stats really quick there. And of course, compare yourself to the NBA average. Um, on this tile, as well as some others, you can also look at things as graphs. So if you click here, you can jump through these different stats and see how you your team stacks up there. Uh, points per period, self-explanatory. Uh, pace, I'm sure most of you are familiar with, but this is just the, the total possessions you have per game. And it's not necessarily good or bad to have a, a fast or slow pace. And of course, you know, depends on, on the personnel of your team and, and the coaching strategy and all that. Um, you know, I can think of, you know, just teams from 10 years ago, like the Spurs had always had a slower pace in the, in the Duncan years and the Suns had a really fast pace with Steve Nash and, and D'Antoni, obviously. Um, they're both obviously great offensive teams. So it, it totally depends on, you know, what, what your players are like for pace. Uh, advanced stats down here. So we have simple wins and losses. We also have Pythagorean wins and losses. So I'm a big fan of these stats. Um, to explain a little bit more, Pythagorean wins and losses, all it does is it takes into account uh, your team's point differential. So obviously if you're a team that's, you know, blowing everyone out and has a really good record, that's a better team than it, you know, a team that has a good record that's just barely winning all their games. So that's all Pythagorean wins and losses takes into account. And the reason it's a good stat is it's actually more predictive of future performance than just wins and losses. So you can see the Bulls here actually got a little bit unlucky this year. They were 22 and 43 at least so far. Um, and then their Pythagorean wins, uh, they had 26.1 and 38.9 losses. So the Bulls got a little bit unlucky in close games. And so you can see, you know, if your team, if your team's Pythagorean wins are way above your normal wins, you're getting a little bit unlucky and you can expect to perform better moving forward. And the opposite is true if your Pythagorean wins are lower than, than your normal wins. Um, o rating, D rating, net rating, I'm sure pretty much all you're familiar with, just points scored, points allowed, and then the point differential per 100 possessions. So of course, just uh, normalizes for different pace. So that's a lot better stat to look at than, you know, just total points scored or total points allowed per game. Um, and then pace, we already talked about free throw rate. So the percentage of your possessions ending in free throws and then three point rate, which is the percentage of shot attempts that a team takes that are three pointers. So we've obviously seen that skyrocket really across all of basketball here in the last five years or so. Then down here at the bottom, we have the box score. Like you'd expect, you've seen a million times. A cool thing on this box score is you can toggle between different modes. So we have averages by default, you can look at totals. You can look at advanced stats right here. So pretty much all these we've talked about, uh, true shooting and effective field percentage, 
both better than you know normal field goal percentage. It just effective field goal percentage takes into account three pointers, and true shooting percentage takes into account uh, three pointers and uh, free throw uh, percentage as well. So you guys, of course, can read more about any of these stats. I don't want to dive too deep into any of them in in the stats glossary. A lot of advanced stats you can look at here, including plus minus, and then per forty. We're actually going to do an update here quickly for the NBA to make this per forty eight, obviously, because you guys have the the forty eight minute games, but you can look at, you know, these, these different stats, uh, pretending every player played 40 minutes per game. So a great way to kind of find undervalued players. Of course, if players aren't playing a lot, you can see, you know, are their per, per 40 minute stats good? And that, that's definitely something to keep track of. So those are the main things on the dashboard page here. You can also uh, toggle between these different splits. So last five will show you, you know, more recent trends um, as that comes up here. So you can see, you know, how your team's doing just over the last five games, if you want. And click on wins versus losses and now you'll see two rows of data stats and wins versus losses obviously teams generally going to be performing better in wins and losses but it's interesting to see where the differences are uh and then home versus away um self-explanatory there and then we also have conference versus non-conference probably more useful for for the ncaa level um but that's something you guys have uh here as well all right, so we're gonna go through a lot here. Um, so I'm gonna pause every five minutes or so for questions. Um, so if you guys have any questions so far, feel free to write in. I should also point out, you can of course print this page just by clicking print here. But I'll pause for you know 30 seconds here. You guys can use the chat functionality to write in any questions you have so far. All right, looks like we're all good. So I'll keep chugging along here. Uh, the next tab kind of in this workflow is the schedule tab here. So you're seeing the Bulls schedule throughout the entire year. And before I go any further, I want to point out, you know, I was looking at my own team stats, but you can look at any any team stats in the NBA here just by clicking on them. So if I wanted to, you know, look at New York, just click on them, them, them there. And I can see I'm in the opponents tab and I'm looking at all those same stats, but, but for New York. So obviously during the year, that's probably even the most common workflow is, you know, look up your next couple upcoming opponents. Uh, and then start analyzing their stats there. So moving back to my team schedule, again, I can see all these games. I can filter the list by any of these things, or especially in the NBA, since you play everyone at least a couple times, you can filter by teams and show me my games against Boston. You can also click on any box score. So if I go here, click on uh, maybe this box score against the Knicks with the score. You can see the points, the game flow, as we call it, which is a line graph showing the uh, score throughout the game. You can even hover over any of these dots, and I'll show you a little more detail about each event. Each dot represents points being scored. And then the uh, actual box score underneath. We do a cool thing here where we highlight players if they're far above or below their season average. So in this game, for example, Wendell Carter had 20. If you hover over his stat, he only averaged 11 over the course of the year, so we're going to highlight that in orange. And then for players below, we do the opposite. So Kobe White only had five in this game. If I hover over, he averaged 14 over the course of the year. So kind of a quick way uh, to look at that. You can, of course, print this page. You can uh, change your colors on and off that I just talked about. If I jump to the play-by-play, -play, uh, we pull in all the play-by-play, -play, which allows us to do some pretty cool advanced stats. I'll show you guys here in the scouts. Uh, a really easy way to filter by different things. So you know, if you just want to see things in the fourth quarter, you can filter by that. Maybe you're playing New York, so you only want to see New York stats, and you can even filter that you only want to see, you know, New York's turnovers. We, again, you can filter by any of these stats here in the fourth quarter. So I'll show you the time, the score, and what happened when. So the, these two pages actually recently updated for those who used FastScout this year. You'll notice they, they look a lot prettier these days, so proud to get that update out for you guys. All right, so that's the schedule tab. Another recently updated page is the roster tab. So just a great way to see an overview of the team, uh, of your own team. A couple of cool things here. You can now um, change your amount of players per row. So if I want to see, you know, a little more dense, I can add two players per row or just keep it at one. And I can even sort by different things, number, name, even points per game. And now I'm sorting by that. Um, we had, our newest update actually came out yesterday is we have a player page. 
So you can click on any of these player names, either from here or back on the dashboard, and you'll go to a page that's totally focused on them. We have a little issue we're actually figuring out this morning about last five and last 10. So we'll get that ironed out probably later today. Uh, but you can see, you know, all those basic and advanced stats for a player and even a game log where you can just jump through the entire game log, you know, use here to click on those team shortcuts and then jump to any box score as well. So I know you guys have all seen game logs a million places, but the whole idea here is you can be in Fast Scout to do all this. You don't have to go to basketball reference or ESPN or NBA.com. We're really trying to get all this data in here. And you, since you guys are all, all in here already creating your scouting reports, we want you to be able to use it kind of as your content consumption as you're going throughout the year. So a lot more to come on the player page, a little more updates here, career tabs, injury history, et cetera. Uh, but a cool start there for, for the uh, player page. All right, so everything, of course, that we've talked about so far is outside of, you know, the core of the, the product of creating scouts. So let, let's go to the meat of the product here. So I'll jump into the scouts tab. And here, you know, your list of all your scouts will, will come up. So, you know, the teams that use Fast Scout this year uh, have, you know, 60, 70, 80, depending on my games they played, including preseason uh, here on this page. You can, of course, filter by season, filter by team, filter by the coach. I'm the only coach in this account, but you should see all your other coaches here on the prepared by if multiple coaches are creating scouts. And then of course, all your list of scouts. So first, uh, let's talk about creating a totally new scout from scratch. So you can just click new scouting report here, type in uh, the scout name, choose your team, pretend I'm playing Boston, and then you can just start from a blank template, uh, which you really only do at the very start, which is just you know, a totally blank page, or you can choose a save template, which we'll go into a little more detail what that means, but obviously you can, create your template however you want, save it, and then build from there. If you know the season was ongoing here, we would have the schedule pulled up here on the right and a little shortcut where you could just click a team and it would just start creating the scout immediately. Since we're all on pause, obviously, we're not getting any new schedule data. It means we've seen who, who you guys are gonna be playing when you come back, um, but that's just a nice shortcut that any of you that use Fast Scout this year will probably recognize. All right, so we'll come back to this page here in a second, but let's actually jump into the scout itself. So I'll click on this Dallas Mavericks scouting report. And here's Scout Builder. So um, any of you guys that have used Fast Scout Classic, you'll notice how different this is. We kind of use Google Docs as our model. We like to call this Google Docs for basketball coaches. So the first thing I want to point out is we are working on the actual page itself that we will be printing. And in, in Fast Scout Classic, our old software that we call Classic now, uh, you'll, you'll remember that you have to jump between tabs, a, a Scout tab and a Preview tab, build on one tab, view on the other. You don't even know how it's going to look. So instead we're like Google Docs, right? Where you just see the page, you type on it directly from simple things like text tiles here where you can type in anything, all the normal word processing stuff. It's all so much easier than the old stuff to you know, change your font size, add numbering, bullet points, colors right here. Everything just works a lot like Google Docs. So obviously text tiles are really important. So coaches pop those in all the time to much more complex things like personnel tiles, of course. So I'll go through uh, Luca here in a little more detail. Um, personal tiles probably are our most featured tile where you can pull in your different stats as splits here. Obviously add text, even shot charts, which we'll go through in a little more detail, uh, player info, and of course his image. Um, like all of our tiles, everything's totally customizable. So if I click here and jump to settings, I can change what player I'm looking at. I can look at different stats here so I can add or remove any of these stats. If there's any stat we don't have, um, you can always type in custom stats here. Um, we'll, we're going to be adding a lot more stats. We have access to everything on mba.com slash stats. So we're going to be adding a lot more stats for the NBA come this off season. So if there's anything you don't see, it's likely coming. But if we don't, you know, even have it come this summer, feel free to write into us and we'll make sure we get it. Um, so you can add or remove any of these stats, change your stat type, change your decimal places and your rounding. And then you can even toggle between average and totals just by clicking here or dragging these around. So just want to point out how much easier it is to make changes to all these things than, than uh, Fast Scout Classic. That's a big advantage of this, a much less steep learning curve to jump in. Everything is just kind of where you expect it. If you jump to the games, you can add or remove splits super easily, previous games against the team. Even adding custom splits here is really easy where you can pick and choose any games. Reorder these if you want as well click save and then all those changes will just save immediately. So that's a little bit more of a deep dive there on the personal tile and we'll come back to that here in a second. So I'm gonna just scroll through the scouts. You guys can get an idea of all the different things uh, that you can pull in. And again, you can add or remove any of this, rearrange however you want. Every team scouting report looks pretty different from each other, but this is just kind of one example. So we got, you know, team stats here, 
you can see different splits across the season. Again, you can always add or remove anything you want in there. Those advanced stats and fast scout factors like we saw before. Leaders tiles, obviously pretty important, especially in the NBA. Show me the top scorers, top three-point shooters, top free throw shooters. But super easy to reverse this. Instead of, you know, the players who shoot the most free throws, I can see the highest percentage or the lowest percentage. You can always remove players. Like Josh Reeves hasn't played much, so you can remove him. Uh, you can filter by anything as well. So a lot of customization options here in any of these leaders tiles. Um, I'm going to pause really quick again for questions before we get into kind of the more advanced stats and we're flying through pretty quick. So uh, feel free to write in with any questions you guys have. Yeah, great question here. Can we edit the free throw leaders and bad free throw shooters by taking out guys that do not play? Yes, absolutely. So let's do that really quick, show you guys exactly how that's done. So first I'm gonna sort by worst free throw shooters. So Josh Reeves, definitely don't want him. Jump into here into the settings. So here's all the options like we've talked about earlier. And then here you can just hide players. So I'll just start typing in Josh Reeves. Boom, now he's gone if I, you know, Wanted to hide Antonius as well, I can do that. And then another shortcut here is I can even just filter out by minimum free throw average. So I got rid of Josh and Antonius manually, but another way to do that is I could say, you know, I only wanna see people who shoot at least one free throw attempt per game. So that'll get rid of these three guys. So I just add one right there. Boom, you can see the, those three guys are gone. So a couple of different ways you can do that, removing players individually, or even setting a minimum free throw attempt average. And this applies to all of our tiles. Again, that's a great example of free throw attempts. You can do it for three pointers, for points, rebounds, assists. All of our leaders tiles look just like this. Great question there. All right, I think that's it for now. So let's keep chugging along. So I referenced the play-by-play uh, -play we had earlier. So we can do a bunch of cool things with that. The first one is lineup stats. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this, but we uh, have lineup stats ourselves where you can look at how, how the team performed when different groups of players are on the floor. So for the Mavericks, at least, these were their most played lineups over the course of the year, filtered by or sorted by minutes played. So you can see all these advanced stats, their O rating, D rating, net rating, and all these advanced stats here. But like every one of our tiles, totally customizable again. So I can change the lineup size. I can look at, you know, three-man combinations. I can add or remove any of the stats change how many minimum minutes or lineups I want to even display and click save and boom, that, that might take a little, my internet's been a little bit slow. I don't know, it came in pretty quick. And so you can see uh, for, for the Mavericks, they're different three man lineups throughout the course of the year, how they played. So pretty interesting. I want to point out, you know, I'm, I'm pretending to be the Bulls here playing the Mavericks, looking at their stats. Every single thing here, you can look at yourself on. So you can look at your own team stats. You can even create entire skying reports that are all about your own team, especially with something like lineup stats, that's really useful to look kind of internally because your, your own coach can con obviously control your own lineups. You can't necessarily control the, the opponent's lineups. Uh, so really cool way to look at your own data. Um, so that's lineup stats. Clutch stats, kind of same idea. We get it from the play-by-play. -play. We know who's on the court and when. And so we can see how uh, players are performing and what we define as clutch situations with any of these stats. Now the question you always get is, well, what do you define as a clutch situation? So here's the answer. Uh, by default, less than five minutes in the game and the score within five points here in the fourth quarter, we define this clutch. But the great thing is you guys can change this to whatever you want. Maybe you want to make it only three minutes and score within three points, like a really close game here at the end. Click save and boom, immediately all the tiles and all the stats update based on how you define clutch situations. So you can define that however you want. And again, an especially useful thing to kind of look at for your own players. Looks like we got another question coming in here. All right, give me one second to read it. All right, good question here. And I'm sure uh, applies to a bunch of teams in the NBA. So one of the issues with the web-based platform that we're showing you guys here was that uh, you're unable to implement some of the stats that you get from your analytics department and you'd have to, you know, type them in manually. They wouldn't be formatted correctly and look, look clean and aligned. 
So absolutely, that, that was an issue we, we've had in the past. The good news is uh, we're actually gonna completely rebuild our custom tables. So, so something I wanna go over in this webinar anyway, let me scroll to the bottom and just add a totally blank page here that you guys can see. So, so what teams are, are doing now, you know, if you have any stats that we don't have, uh, teams have been adding in a custom table, which is just a totally blank table where you can, you know, add columns and rows, start typing things in here. Um, but I'll be totally honest with you guys. I don't think our custom tables have been very good um, compared to, you know, Microsoft Word even or, or, or Google Docs. There's just not a ton of functionality here and it's not super easy and then things don't line up correctly. So one of our, our biggest goals this summer is to completely rebuild custom tables from scratch. So I have a bunch of new features. Be a lot easier to add rows and columns, a lot easier to move things around, be way easier to copy and paste data into it. And then you'll even have like all the formatting options that you're used to. So like, you know, in the text tile, we do a good job giving you guys all these formatting options, but those aren't available in the custom tables. So we're gonna bring all these formatting options here to the custom table, let you left align, right align, center align things. So this is, is one of our, our major projects for this summer as we kind of get the rest of the MBA and even expand into other markets is to really empower coaches to have a lot better custom tables where they can really easily copy and paste in stats. Cause you know, we'll, we'll have all the stats we can get, but we don't have, you know, every stat ever, especially with all your internal analytics teams. Uh, some of that's even proprietary, but we'll make it a lot easier on you guys to, uh, to add data here. Um, so th this is feedback we, we've heard, you know, really from all levels. So we're really motivated to, to solve that problem for you here come the summer. It's a great question there. All right, let me scroll back up. All right, I think we're good on questions for now. I think I finished up there on clutch stats. So let's keep scrolling down. Uh, so you saw some of those shot charts attached to personnel tiles. Uh, down here, I've kind of made them a little bit bigger for you so you can see them even easier. So we have this shot charts tile on the left-hand side. And so we have a, three different types of shot charts. The first are these hex shot charts that have gone increasingly popular in recent years where the size of the hex is the volume from every location. And then the color is the efficiency relative to the NBA average from every location. So pretty interesting here, you can see, you know, the Mavericks awesome shooting from three on the right side of the court, less so on the left, don't shoot a lot of mid range, which is not in vogue, of course, in the NBA and decent around the rim. Um, but all of our shot charts can be totally customized like anything else, jump into settings. Here's the three different types I'll go through. You can choose which labels you wanna see, jump back to the games and I can, you know, quickly uh, filter by any splits I want. Something a lot of coaches do is I want all games, but I want to throw out a couple early season games or you guys can always pick and choose whatever you want here just by uh, checking on and off any game. Click save and boom, that, that'll update with the data as it comes in. So of course you can look at player shot charts. So here's Luca's shot chart, you know, for this last year, everything of course totally, totally customized like we talked about, but then you can look at individual games. So for these, I like to use our make and miss shot chart where obviously green circles are makes, red X's are misses. Um, so this is, you know, Dallas's recent game against Denver, seeing their, their shot chart from that game. And then, oh, I forgot to, to edit the title here. This should say Tim Hardaway. But we have these zone shot charts, which are kind of classic that you guys have seen forever. We just cut the court up in di different zones. Green is good, red is less good, yellow somewhere in the middle. Looks like we have another question coming in. To be clear, this is no longer an application, but a website. So no more installs, et cetera. That's right. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're really the Google Docs model now. You don't have to download anything. Uh, everything's here on the web. Everything saves automatically. That's another important thing I should point out. You don't have to click fast share, wait for stats to update. Like it's just a normal web browser where everything's saving in the cloud all the time. Uh, so a lot easier to use. Um, I will talk about kind of fast draw and plays in a little bit. Um, here in a sec. Uh, Fast Draw itself still exists as a desktop app to actually create your plays and playbooks, but all those plays and playbooks now integrate really nicely on the web. So I'll show you guys more about that here in a couple minutes. So another good question. Um, shot charts looks like are scaled on field goal percentage. Can you scale the colors on effective field goal percentage or points per shot? So we have all that data. That's a project we're actually working on this summer. So it should be pretty easy just to toggle between any of those options. So we will absolutely have that uh, in time for the season next year. So our, our first year of shot charts has been successful, but yeah, we'll be adding a lot more to it come this summer. And that's one of the things on, on my list to, uh, 
to scale the colors on, on other options like effective logo percentage? Great question there. All right, I'll give you guys maybe 20, 30 more seconds to ask any other questions and we'll uh, jump into the, the fast draw integration itself. All right, let's move along here. So I'll scroll down. So here you can see these pretty uh, play diagrams uh, flying into to Fast Scout here. So we have this dedicated plays tile where you can see basically anything that you've ever created in Fast Draw, the second you fast share it in Fast Draw, it'll show up here on this list. So all the Fast Draw things you're used to filtering on season, team, series, you can even search by play name. And then if you wanna add plays into the Scout, you just check the box and add those plays. And then I'll talk more about this. We have a, a separate dedicated plays tile, or sorry, plays tab itself. And I'll go through this in a little more detail, but you can even add video here uh, from your computer from Synergy. And so the, those are the little icons you're seeing up here at the top. So I'll add those in and I've you know, added these four plays into my scouting report. So you can see those, you can even change the frames per row if you want, three to two to one, depending on you know, how many frames you guys have. And of course, all this can be rearranged just by clicking and dragging. This applies to all of our tiles, of course. Everything's just like a little widget that you just drag around your page. So those are the plays. I'll talk more exactly how that works when we get to the plays tile here in a second. Um, so yeah, so obviously a ton here. Of course, all of our tiles live on the left. I'm not gonna take the time to go through everything because I'll, I'll keep you guys here forever, but worth playing around with more of these. We also have a design tab where you can change your theme. Standard and modern are two newer ones that we have here on the web. Um, Seattle and Alaska are some classic ones we brought over from Fast Scout Classic. So you guys will feel at home with those and Fast and Clean is kind of a mix of, of the old and the new. So you can play around with any of these themes. I, I like standard the most. I think it's our prettiest design. But all this does, I'll click on one, refresh on me here really quick, but it just literally changes the look and feel of things. It doesn't change any content at all. So you guys will probably recognize Seattle for any of those classic users. We've kept that around for you guys as well. So let me jump back to standard because I'm biased towards that. Um, as this refreshes here, you'll see some other options here in the design tab. We actually now have uh, landscape mode. So if you want you know, to rotate your piece of paper 90 degrees and build everything in landscape, you just click there toggling on and off records, tons of custom customization options here with the headers. I can change whether it's a skinny header or a full header, or even hide the header on different pages. And of course you can change your colors too. So we default to the opponent's team colors, um, but you can, you know, on the bulls here. So I pulled in the bulls colors. I can make things red or black, or even add a custom color down here by clicking in and then just typing in any hex code. So tons of customization options uh, down here as well. All right, so you change your title of the scout up here. Uh, game date should be the game that the day that the game is being played. So all stats will be updated up to that date. So that's important to keep track of. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is one of the main reasons we moved here to the web, which is the mobile app with with video integration. So let's jump back to this Luka Doncic tile. What you'll see on every tile is a little video icon on the top left. So again, back on Luka, you can click here, and then here's all the videos I've added. So to add more videos, you just click add video and then you have two options here. You can either add it from your computer. So we accept video from anywhere, really any, any file type, file size. There's no limit on the size or the type of file. If you guys have stuff in sports code or your own, <clears throat> excuse me, internal video solution, save it to your computer and then you just add from computer here and boom, we'll up, up will pop uh, your, your normal computer selection and you can add any video from there. Uh, we also have an official partnership with Synergy. So if I click here and click add from Synergy, up will pop um, all your Synergy edits and clips. So if you guys have anything in Synergy, you can see it reflected here within FastScout. And I can click on a player and then see all those clips. I can filter by all the things you guys are used to in Synergy. Uh, we are linked into their actual API. So all the data is the exact same, stays updated in real time. So as you make any changes in Synergy, it'll flow through here. And then you can just add any videos that you want, click done and add those as clips. I already added these, so I won't do that, but it's that easy and they come in immediately from Synergy. We're not even trying to download and re-upload. That's the real value of this. We just put them in here immediately and they're already saved on Synergy's end. So it all, all happens immediately and 
again, no limits, especially for the NBA teams here on the amount of videos you can add or, or the size. We see teams adding full game clips, gigabytes upon gigabytes all the time, which is totally fine. You can uh, edit your titles and these kind of default synergy titles and even notes down here as well. And the point of doing all this, of course, is to send it down to the phone. So I'll show you guys how you send it to the phone here in a second, but let me open up my phone here on the left side of the screen. So this is a live app right now. We're live on iPhone, iPad, and Android. We've seen some really cool usage in the NBA um, on, on all three of those platforms this year. So here you're seeing the list of scouts that I've sent down to the phone. And again, you can pick and choose what your players can even see. If I click on Dallas Mavericks. Here's the same scout here on the phone that I've been working on the web. You'll see all the tiles are laid out in the exact same order as I built it on the web. So it should all look familiar. And scroll through that. And let's jump into Luca himself. So here I'm seeing all the stats that I pulled in, laid out in the same order, the notes, that little shot chart I added here on the right. I can even tap on this and zoom around. Everything's pretty slick. And then down here are the videos I've added. So probably the best part, click on any video and then just start playing it back immediately there. We even have a play all view where it'll go into kind of this full screen mode and tilt my phone sideways and it'll just play the first video. And then the second the first video ends, the next video will just start automatically. So if you have a lot of you know shorter clips, that's a great way to do it. You'll even see over here on the right, we have a little slow-mo and fast-mo button that anyone can use just to jump through there. Then I can just get out by swiping like you'd expect. So really proud of the mobile app. We actually hired a, a designer and an engineer from Apple itself to build it with me. So things look pretty slick and intuitive. Again, we've seen a ton of usage in the NBA and the NCAA with it. Coaches have been really happy with it. So we know this is different than how teams have done in the past, obviously printing out all their scouts and handing it to the players, but this is obviously the future, right? We don't want to be dealing with, with pieces of paper. It's less secure, it gets lost. Players just throw away pieces of paper, especially the, the younger players. So mobile app's really great. Um, we, we really recommend uh, changing your workflows if you're not using it yet to, to start using the mobile app. So another thing I should point out on the mobile app here is you can download anything. So everything streams by default, but if you just want to download all the content on the mobile app, especially those videos, you can just tap on this button up here and it'll just quickly download everything. So you know, if you're jumping on the plane or the bus, you won't have cellular or Wi-Fi. you can just click that and then everything will be downloaded there for you. All right, let me pause again really quick for questions. I think we had one just come in. So let me check on that really quick. Good question here. Does the mobile app work with Android since you hire an Apple engineer? Absolutely. We have an Android engineer too, a full-time Android guy. Uh, he's been great. So it works perfectly on Android as well, has total feature parity between Android and, and iOS. And it's pretty cool for any of those you that have Android. There's little just differences between an Android operating system versus an Apple operating system. And we've taken that into account. We didn't design it to look 100% identical because there's just little differences in the way people do things on Android versus iOS. So you'll see those differences if you have an Android phone as well. Yeah, great question here. Can we track what accounts open and watch videos? Absolutely. I will get to that here in a second. Um, as I show you guys how to actually send it to mobile, that's a feature you have. So give me about one minute and I promise to get to that question. All right, really good questions. Let me keep chugging along here. Uh, so back on the mobile app, I'm just gonna scroll through this whole scout again so you guys can get the idea. Jump into those shot charts, look pretty nice. All the tiles again in the same order. And then even those play diagrams, looking at a box three play, can scroll through all the different frames and then the video underneath can just play that back. So great way to distribute you know, any content to your players as well. It's like another question coming in. If we use the mobile app, we have to connect every iPad to Wi-Fi to get info on there, right? So it depends. Um, some iPads actually have cellular data on them by default, just like a phone. And so for that, you wouldn't, it would just work because um, you have cellular on all the time. But for iPads that are Wi-Fi only, which are definitely some of them, you would just, yeah, need to connect to Wi-Fi uh, at least the first time that you open it to, to get all the content. Um, but again, you can click that download button as I showed you on the top right. And then even if you go offline, everything um, on, on the app will, will work that you've opened it and saved for offline usage. It's a good question there. All right, let's talk again, uh, as, as we had the question earlier, to, to track usage and act, to actually get the content down to the, to the phone and to the iPad. So I'm gonna click done here to jump back to that Scouts page we were on earlier. So a couple important things here. 
One is mobile access. So if I click here, up comes your list of all your coaches and players. I just you know made up a bunch of coach and player names here, but obviously this will be your, your own list of your, your players and coaches here. And if you guys ever need help setting any of this up, this is done in a little bit different part of a fast model itself. So we can absolutely help you guys get set up, you know, setting up your players with emails and all that. So a couple really easy options here. One, you can just send the content to everyone just by clicking select all and clicking save. The cool thing that we do is the second you do that, we'll actually send a push notification to everyone's phone and iPad that a new scout versus Dallas Mavericks is available. They can just tap on that like it's a little text message and open right into uh, the, the scouting report itself. The great thing we have here too is you can pick and choose who you send things to. So some coaches and teams, you know, create one scouting report just for their coaches. So I could just select my coaches here and click save. Some, you know, create scouts just for their players. So I could select just my players. We even have some teams creating scouts just for specific players or even like an off-season workout plan or a self-scout about one player. And you could just send that to, to one player and kind of the coach that's working with them. So I'm going to focus mostly on the opponent scouting reports here. We have other webinars that are actually focused on, you know, off-season workout plans, practice plans. There's so much you can do with, with Scout Builder itself. It doesn't always have to be focused on your next game. Um, but that this is how you pick and choose who you actually send any content to. So I'll click select all and click save. And then the other option here is the question asked is mobile usage. So I click here and up will pop. It's just me in this account, of course, but up will pop the list of all your coaches and players here. And if I've opened a tile, we'll mark that tile as viewed. So I've looked at three out of 23 of my tiles. And then for videos, if you watch at least 90% of a video, we'll mark that video as watched. Um, so I've only looked at one out of eight of my videos on this scout. So we'll actually have more coming to this page. We'll have total time spent on the scout as well uh, as another uh, kind of column on this page as well. So you can make sure you know your players are, are viewing the content. So let me pause again for questions. I think one more might have come in, uh, but I'll pause it for another 30 seconds. You guys can write anything you can think of. All right, since we're back on this page, let's talk about another key uh, workflow, especially for, for the NBA teams as you guys travel so much. So we do have offline mode. Obviously, we're, we're on the web here, so it's different than, than our old system, but it's super easy. If you need to work on any scout when you know you won't have Wi-Fi, just click here on the three dots menu and click on offline mode. So I'll just do this Raptor scout, for example, click offline. So you can see that text updates. And now this scout lives over here in the offline scouts tab. So the amazing thing here is I could turn off my Wi-Fi. I could even turn off my computer and restart it. And this scout will still be here. I can open up the scout, do anything I want. The only exception is videos won't work offline because you can't upload while you have no internet, but all the stats will stay, will be updated based on when you took it offline, all the notes, anything that you rearrange, drag around, that'll all save. And then as long as you just need to use the same web browser. So we generally recommend using Chrome, but this will work on, on any web browser. Once you're back online, you know, connect back to your Wi-Fi up here, click here, bring Scout online, and then boom, it'll move out of this offline Scouts tab back to the opponent Scouts tab and all the changes that you made will be saved. So we've been doing this for two seasons. It's been working great. Uh, coaches have really liked it. We haven't run into any problems at all. So uh, definitely a, a common workflow here for the NBA as you guys are on the road so much. You can also always restore any of your previous Scouts. So if, you know, anything went wrong or you want to, you know, just go back to where things were. You can click restore and you'll see we're saving your scouts all the time. So you'll never lose any data. We obviously always have some concern with coaches coming over here to the web, which is different of course than, than the desktop uh, fast scout where everything saved your hard drive. But again, we're saving everything all the time. Every five minutes as you make any changes, we're saving a previous version. So good peace of mind there where you can always jump back to any previous uh, version of your scout. All right, let's jump back into the scout again really quick to show you guys a couple more features. Um, one, I just want to point out templates. I'm not going to go into detail on templates here, but if you, you know, create a scout and everything looks how you want it to, you can create a template just by clicking here. And then of course, any scouts you make in the future, you can select this template as a place to start. And, you know, I, the scout against Dallas here, but you know, maybe I'm playing uh, Minnesota next. 
all the content will just come in, but with Minnesota's players and Minnesota's stats. And your only job will, of course, have to be changing the text around um, as you see fit. But of course, this is how you create a new template. You can also update your templates as well. And so that one is obviously what ends up saving you so much time over the course of the year. Just like Fast Scout Classic, you don't have to recreate all this stuff every time. Save it as a template and your scout just builds automatically from there. Uh, you can print from here or save as a PDF. Go to that help page that we talked about earlier from here. You can even duplicate your scout just by clicking here. And then finally, we have this new feature called presenter mode I want to demo for you guys really quick. So you click on this play button, we jump into really a full screen version of the scout. So we're seeing all the same content, but it's more like a PowerPoint where we're focused on one tile at a time. So first you'll see this little title screen, and then you can just press the tab button to jump between different tiles. You can alternately just click on them up here as a little shortcut. And so now we're, you know, we're seeing Luca's stats, notes, and shot chart that I pulled in. But then I can just jump right to the video and start playing this back. So this is really great, you know, for the film room. You've got the whole team together. You, you know, you give them all the scouting report, but this is a great kind of interactive way that you can put it up on the big screen and jump through all the film itself. We even have all these shortcuts that Synergy and Sports Code have used forever uh, that we just copied uh, with the space bars play and the arrows are like slow-mo and fast-mo with these different shortcuts. So we have all that written in our help documents, but a lot of coaches are already super familiar with those as they've used them forever in, in sports code as well. So just a different view uh, of the scout. This is a pretty new feature. So we'd love to get you guys feedback. Every team's a little bit different, how they tend to do film room and, and things like this. Um, but we're really excited about that presenter mode feature as well. All right, looks like another question coming in here. Yeah, so great question. When you play Dallas for the second time, can you duplicate the scout and all the info will transfer over? Absolutely. So referenced it really quick. Let me go back, click duplicate scout. You know, Dallas too. What will happen is obviously the season's all messed up now, but if you were playing Dallas again, it would show up right underneath here as your next game against Dallas. You'd literally be able to click that and click save here. You know, since we're in a all in quarantine, I'll click a random date and click save. And then all that content will copy over. So you'll, you'll have created a totally new scout and you can just go from there. So super easy to duplicate a scout just like that. All right, I know that's a lot. I think I hit on pretty much everything here in Scout Builder. Again, there, there's more, but I don't want to keep you guys here for two hours. So I think I'll just spend five or 10 minutes on kind of the other tabs here. Uh, but obviously tons of customization options in, in Fast Scout. So let me click Done. You can, of course, uh, archive any Scout just by clicking here and archiving. So then it'll just exist over here in the Archive tab, and then you can delete it totally from here or even restore it if you made a mistake and want to bring that back. Talked about offline scouts, self scouts again, or any scouts you create on your own team. And then all your templates live here. You can rename them or uh, delete them by clicking on that menu right there. All right, let's jump to the final two tabs here. So the plays tab we kind of referenced earlier. Um, this again is where all your fast draw content comes in and all of the content on here you saw within the plays tile itself within Scout Builder. So here, as we saw before, I can filter by team season series, search for play names add video really easily, change my frames per row. And then probably the coolest thing here is I can send it directly to mobile. So I can have as a shortcut just by clicking on any of these mobile glyphs and adding an individual play, send it to any coaches or players. Or alternatively, if I want to send a bunch, I can click mobile access. And now you have this option where you can multi-select, manage access, and boom, just sent that out to everyone. So it's that easy to, to send multiple plays out to people. Looks like we had another question come in. Let me check on that really quick. Oh no, that was an old one, sorry. Oh no, there's a new one. Is there a way to PDF your full scout if you're going to print all say four to five pages? Absolutely. So let me jump back to the scout, go through that in a little more detail. So this print button here, click that. Up will pop up the normal, you know, Chrome printing menu. Let me make it in portrait. I was testing landscape mode earlier today. So you have a couple options here. Um, all browsers have the option to save as a PDF. So I can do that, save it as a PDF, and then email that around if I want. Or your printers will show up here too. So this is my office printer. Uh, I'm not in my office right now, so it's not going to work. This is my mom's printer because I'm working from home like everyone is. Um, and so you can uh, print, obviously, to a printer here or save as your PDF right there. All right.
Jumping back to the plays tab here. So I showed you guys how to send multiple down to the phone at once. Any plays with videos, you can see have a little video icon there. Looks like we got another question coming in. What if you have multiple templates to one PDF? Yeah, so this is a great question. So um, what some teams do is for any given game, they have multiple scouts or multiple templates. And right now you have to print all of those templates separately and then you can staple them together at the end. But we're actually working on a, a new functionality this summer we're calling Merge Scouts where you can create separate, separate templates totally separately. For example, you can have an offense template that's a page, a defense template that's a page, a personnel template that's a page. So we do have some teams doing that, which is fine. And then what we'll have is a, a button here on the Scouts tab and I can keep this coach individually updated as we get this released here where you'll just be able to merge uh, different scouts and templates together into one and then click print once and then it'll all just print together. So that's something we're, we're actively working on here in the off season. All right, great question there. So that's the plays tab we've kind of gone through. Again, you can print out any of these plays here as well. Um, and then brand new features, we've also now flown in uh, playbooks from uh, Fast Draw. So any playbooks you create and any settings you add to those playbooks, as you guys know, there's a million different settings there in Fast Draw. We'll come over here straight to the web. So I only have a couple playbooks in here, but they just are, are in here. It's just a normal PDF. And again, I can show my videos, add any videos here, and you can download it or print it from this page as well. And then of course, send it to mobile just by clicking the glyph or multi-selecting here. So let's jump here to the phone, open back up. Click on Fast Scout. So again, we were in that Scout before, but I can go back. I want to point out these four different tabs at the bottom. So plays, just like we were on here on the web, here's all the plays I've sent down to my players. Just like on the web, I can filter by season, team, or series. I can even sort up here or search, especially if you start sending a lot of plays, really nice search, search functionality. Let me get that out of the way, sorry, okay. And then I can click on any play, see all those frames, and then see the videos I attached to it right underneath. So all that same functionality within Fast Scout or within Scout Builder, but this is a dedicated plays tab where you can really send down all your plays that you want to your players. And then right next to that, we have the playbooks tab. So here's the, the two playbooks I've created. Tap on one, see a preview of that playbook, and then the videos underneath. And then if I tap on the playbook again, now I'm in kind of a full screen PDF viewer where again, I can scroll through the entire playbook. And I, again, I wanna point out whatever settings you guys make within Fast Draw itself, if you have three frames on a page or two plays or whatever, change your labels around, those will all flow through here on the web as well. All right, I'm gonna pause one, one last time for questions and then we just have one more tab to do. So feel free to write any questions you guys have on plays or playbooks. All right, looks like we're good to go. So I'll finish up here with the final videos tab. So this is just a video library where uh, it's really just the quickest way to get content down to your to your players. Um, so we created this because some coaches, you know, want to just add videos and get to their players as quick as possible. They don't need to create a scout and add it to a scout. It's not like a, a video for a play diagram. So this coach is used really creatively. You can add anything you want here, just like in the other places we've seen from your computer, from synergies. So we've seen coaches, you know, adding off-season workouts into here, especially this time of year, full game clips, practice things, uh, really easy to add anything you want here. And just like our other tiles, you can click mobile access and send any of these down to the phone. Uh, some other cool things, you can of course add titles and descriptions, sort by the size and the date added or search here as well. And then as you send these down to the phone, they look pretty slick. Jumping down again to my phone, sorry, I was in the wrong app. Jump to video, so now you'll see, again, all those videos I've sent down to the phone. Click play here, and this will just start streaming automatically just like that. So it's really just the fastest way to, to get content down to your phone uh, as quick as possible. And again, no limits on, on storage size or, or length of any video. All right, looks like we had another question come in. Does our Fast Draw library automatically sync to the Plays tab on the website? Yes. 
every time you click fast share um, inside of fast draw that is saving all the plays on our cloud server and then automatically integrating them onto the plays tab. So that'll absolutely stay updated. You just got to click that fast share button like you're used to inside of fast draw and that sends all the plays there into fast scout. It'll even update any plays that, that you've added previously. Great question there. All right, any, any other questions on the on videos tab or anything else that we've gone through? I, I have hit on uh, pretty much everything I wanted to here. I know it's a lot. Uh, so I'll give you guys 30 more seconds to think of any questions uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, well, it looks like we're good. Thank you all so much for joining joining me today. We really appreciate it. Um, we want to hear all feedback, right? We want to hear anything good or bad, any criticisms or whatever you guys have, those have used in the past year, those that are looking to use in the future. Um, this is the best time of year. We want to hear feedback all year, but especially this time of year as we're kind of in a pause uh, with, with both the NBA and NSA seasons. Uh, please reach out to us with anything, any questions you guys have. That's the, the best and most important part of my job is getting feedback. Uh, so don't be shy. We want to hear anything good or bad uh, that you guys think. Uh, we're, we're really motivated to continue to improve this uh, this summer. We'll be ready whenever the season kicks back off for those who have been using or those who want to start using it. Uh, we're, we get our data directly from the NBA. So the second you know we figure out the schedule and the season moving forward, we will be updated in real time from the NBA uh, league office and stats group themselves. Um, so no worries there. We'll, we'll be ready for the playoffs and excited to, to hopefully finish the season later this spring and this summer. Thank you again all so much for your time and have a good rest of your day.